So please listen to the following teachings uh, with the proper Bodhisattva's motivation, which is to attain enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings. So we will be uh, following the chapter uh, from last week. So uh, the chapter is called um, The Benefits of uh, Nirvana or Liberation. And uh, within that chapter, there are sub subsections. And this particular subsection is called How to Follow a Spiritual Friend. So spiritual friend is uh, the Sanskrit word Kalyan Mitra, uh, which means, um, which is uh, literally translated as spiritual friend, uh, which usually stands for a teacher. So in the Buddhist context, uh, we refer to the teacher by the name uh, Kalyan Mitra, which means a spiritual friend. So someone who makes you grow spiritually is regarded your teacher. Um, so basically, we are going to talk about the qualities of the teacher, uh, what kind of teacher we should be following, what kind of teacher we should be avoiding, uh, and so on and so forth. And that would be the, um, so we covered a little bit of that last week, and we will uh, follow that up uh, this week as well. So last week we talked about the um, different types of quality. Uh, we covered the qualities that a teacher should have. And we also, during the question and answer, we talk about the kind of um, um, qualities or um, uh, characteristics that are, we should avoid in a teacher. So if a teacher, um, we talk about the teacher that uh, that is like a, a millstone made of wood, meaning uh, a particular teacher is from a very uh, high or is born to a very high family or um, noble family, but uh, has no knowledge. Mm. Then the kind of teacher who is like a frog from a well, uh, means a frog from a small well has no understanding of how the ocean looks like. Basically a teacher who has no knowledge at all, and basic, and the teacher who has a little bit of knowledge, that is the frog in the well, then the kind of teacher, uh, the mad teacher, the mad guides, which is uh, um, the teacher has a kind of a twisted understanding of the Dharma, the Buddha Dharma. So this kind of teacher does understand the Buddha Dharma to some some extent, but then um, they want to, they have a, a, a misguided uh, understanding of the uh, misunderstanding of the Buddha's teaching. So they learned, they studied for some time. They are not like the previous teacher who did not study at all, but they studied, but they had a wrong information. They had a wrong understanding, uh, misinformation about the Dharma. And then because they themselves had the misinformation, they lead other people to uh, the, through the wrong path as well. So these are called the mad guides. And then there are the blind guides, which are the teacher uh, has, uh, you know, have qualities uh, in general, um, no bad teacher in general. But uh, for example, if you are going to seek a teacher on a certain matter, that teacher has to have a, a superior knowledge uh, than you over that matter. Um, if you want to study, let's say, uh, Buddhist, uh, uh, let's say uh, the, the, six, six, uh, the six perfections, if you want to study about the six perfections, and that your knowledge about the sixth perfection is much better than the teacher, then that person cannot become your uh, teacher for the six perfections. So that teacher, um, if somebody, this is just an example, right? So if somebody uh, says they're going to become your, be your teacher, but is inferior in your in knowledge and experience than yourself, then uh, you can uh, bid them goodbye. So basically, there are four um, kind of teachers, right? Uh, with no knowledge at all, but uh, was born in a noble family, a high family, influential family, or things like that. Basically, teacher with no knowledge, teacher with little bit of knowledge, 
teacher with knowledge that are uh, twisted and teacher that has knowledge but is inferior to you so these teachers should be avoided yeah there's a quote uh, from the uh, there's there's a citation I will read the citation it's on page number 141 uh, in English so it's the first paragraph so the first teacher which is like a millstone uh, made of wood usually millstone is made from uh, stone right so like like Brahmins some defend their caste or in pools of fear for their fife's survival bath themselves in bogus study and reflection such guides are like a millstone made of wood so basically they are talking about uh, the, the, uh, the 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 Brahminical system uh, usually from the uh, uh, the Hindu uh, religion so in the in, 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 in Hinduism the caste system is uh, paramount uh, so therefore whether you are whether whether you have uh, the knowledge proper knowledge or not if you are born in the Brahmin uh, then your caste is the most superior even superior than that of the kings and so therefore just because you were born in the Brahmin uh, family you are a Brahmin and then you can uh, lead uh, the prayers and uh, you know so all that so you become some sort of a medium between the between uh, humankind and the gods so basically <clears throat> uh, uh, that, that is basically in India uh, but also in uh, in Tibet and also in many Asian countries uh, you know when uh, um, especially I think in Tibetan uh, Buddhist system there is a system called the Tulku system where a reincarnated Lama uh, a reincarnated boy is uh, a boy is named as the reincarnation of a, a certain Lama a certain very highly spiritual highly realized master and then that boy is recognized at a very young age as uh, um, the reincarnation of the uh, the master so for example like myself right so I have the title of uh, Tongko Rinpoche so um, so after much uh, deliberation after much uh, study and uh, um, hard work if the boy becomes a, a, a learned uh, master after completing his studies and uh, spiritual experiences then of course they are deemed to be uh, they are worthy of uh, veneration and uh, to be deemed to be regarded as a teacher but uh, just because that boy or girl is born as a, in, a, in, a, in a noble family or in a the lineage of a, um, the reincarnation of a certain um, uh, highly realized master you cannot uh, you know uh, take that, per, that 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 boy or girl as your guru so of course uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not targeting the Tulku system you know uh, I'm not saying that the Tulku the reincarnated boy or girl uh, is not the I'm not saying that boy is uh, the reincarnated reincarn reincarnation of the previous high Lama uh, but he or she may be uh, but due to um, the transference of uh, from one life to the next life a lot of the memories and uh, a lot of the experiences spiritual experiences of the previous lives uh, especially memory memorial uh, experiences were lost during that journey from one life to the next and uh, for that matter revival of that memory revival of that those spiritual realizations are crucial and so for that matter the boy or girl has to undergo uh, vigorous study and spiritual experiences in order for that uh, reincarnation the tulku to be able to teach people to lead people and so on and so forth so therefore uh, yeah that's um, that is the the first line which is the teachers which are like millstones made of wood so that boy may be a tulku may be a reincarnation uh, but that boy is not worthy of uh, uh, becoming not 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 worthy of uh, you know uh, leading people uh, as a teacher at that particular moment so there's one line uh, from the, uh, the this is followed f followed up 
by backed up by one another line from uh, by Guru Padma Sambhava, uh, which says, "Not to examine examine the teacher is like drinking poison. Not to examine the disciple is like leaping from a precipice." So uh, uh, ex examination or in, in, in uh, investigation from research, right? Basically, research from both sides is uh, important. So that uh, from the from the from the students uh, from the students' side, you have to check whether this is the right teacher for you or not. Um, and from the teacher's side, you have to know that whether you have to examine whether this is the right disciple for you or not. So from the teacher from the from the student side, you have to know if there is a connection between me and the teacher. Uh, uh, you know, and when when I say connection, you know, teacher, spiritual teacher is not about gathering information alone. So when you go to a uh, conventional uh, school, the teacher is there to provide you with information, right? Um, so I think that is uh, one big mistake that we do nowadays uh, a lot. The uh, with regarding spiritual teachers. So spiritual teacher is someone there, there to uh, guide you through your spiritual experiences, spiritual practice. Uh, so spirit means the mind, your mental progression or spiritual progression. Uh, <clears throat> uh, whereas the uh, conventional teacher is there just to provide you the right, for, right information. Uh, you know, uh, it's like a um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, just provides you with the right uh, the, the the information, the tools that you need uh, to uh, go through a certain take a certain journey or something like that. So uh, you know it, it's 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 um, different from the spiritual uh, teacher. So for a spiritual teacher, that is the spiritual teacher is there to guide you spiritually or guide you mentally. So uh, he he or she um, you need to rely on he or she. Uh, for your uh, spiritual, spiritual or mental um, progress, your pra uh, the pra uh, progress in your practices, uh, progress in your spiritual development, and so on and so forth. So, for that matter, uh, there, it, it just just because I think I said that last week too. So, just because the teacher has a very famous or the teacher has a um, you know has a very soft spoken or nice looking, that doesn't help. So the teacher has to have, uh, you know, most importantly, the teacher has to have a connection uh, with you. And uh, <clears throat> so most of the, and uh, most of the, most importantly, from the teacher's perspective, of course, the teacher needs to be knowledgeable enough, superior in knowledge uh, uh, than you to lead you. Uh, but at the same time, that co teacher has to have uh, com have compassion as well. So the two wings, right? The wing of wisdom and the wing of compassion. So with the two wings, a bird can fly. Similarly, a teacher has to have both of them. So uh, when you look for a teacher, uh, as a student, when you look for a teacher, you need to look for a teacher who can provide the wisdom aspect, the intellectual, the intellect, right? The information or the knowledge. But at the same time, that teacher has to have kindness, uh, which is from the compassion side. So. Um, if you if you see if if you if you miss either of them in the teacher, you should avoid such a teacher. So basically, I'm just uh, summarizing the whole context of this uh, this chapter uh, into two things. So if you find a teacher that has both those qualities, then you can take that teacher as you, um, that person as your teacher. But if you find someone with one quality but not the other, then uh, you can think you can you can wait a little bit before taking that person as your teacher. And of the two, knowledge and compassion, uh, more compassion or kindness is the most important thing. Because even if the teacher has all the information, but if the teacher is not kind enough and compassionate enough, compassionate enough then uh, that, that teacher will not be patient enough to impart his or her knowledge and experiences uh, to you. Basically, he will not share that with you. He will not be eager to share that with you. He will not be patient enough to listen to your uh, spiritual, your gradual spiritual progresses, your slow spiritual progresses, and then give you the guidance. So um, most importantly, the teacher has to have, uh, of all the qualities that we just spoke about this time, this week and last week, a teacher has to have wisdom and compassion. And of the two, compassion is most important. <clears throat> Thank you.
Okay. Hmm. So that's it. Uh, from the teachers, from the students' uh, point of view, it's very important to find the right teacher. Uh, without because with the, without the right teacher, uh, if you find a teacher with the qualities that I just spoke about, but the wrong qualities, then this can uh, take you to the wrong uh, uh, to, to the wrong direction. So it's like a detour. So for, if you are to for, for, for a destination that you are supposed to reach within one hour, uh, because of the wrong teacher, you will be very much distanced from your destination of. Uh, Nirvana and uh, enlightenment, and uh, uh, for a destination that is supposed to take you one hour, it will take one day and one month, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so that is uh, that is a big, uh, you know, it's a, that's a big problem. So for that for that matter, it's important to check the teacher that you uh, you know that 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 uh, you want to um, take as your teacher, right? The person that you want to accept as your teacher. So uh, this is not about judging people or you know criticizing people or anything like that. Uh, it is uh, very important, you know. For example, when we go to the shop, right? When we go to the supermarket, uh, when we go to buy something, we always look for uh, the, the the expiry date, uh, the the nutritional values, and uh, you know everything. So um, so for so this is like everyday food that we eat, right? Uh, it's a uh, if if you if you eat the wrong food, it's not that big issue. I mean, we have been eating a lot of wrong food uh, for the past, uh, and then you know our health is not that bad, right? Uh, of course, we have health issues, but uh, most of our uh, our daily day to day lifestyle is not very healthy. Uh, so this is like a daily habit that we have, and uh, we make a lot of wrong info. Uh, wrong, uh, um, 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 mistakes when we choose the food that we eat and things like that. Uh, e even though um, that is a small thing, small matter, we st we are so careful about what to eat, what to drink, uh, you know, how to, uh, to 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 exercise and everything like that. But when it comes to spiritual matter, we are not so careful. We just jump into you know everything. Uh, so that is that, that can be very very dangerous because if you find the wrong teacher, that teacher can actually set you back by um, thousands of years uh, in reaching enlightenment. So therefore, for that matter, it's important to um, you know uh, find to look for the right teacher, right? Um, <clears throat> and it, also from the teacher's point of view, you have to find the right student. Uh, so if you take a student that is not uh, uh, ready. So that is like uh, you know when you when when you when you when you try to uh, when you take your your children to the school the school will sometimes say okay our limit is you know this much so this this year's uh, uh, this year's attendance is uh, this year's intake is full we will not take more than this and that uh, student so there's a reason behind that because uh, we have uh, this and that much that amount of staff faculty member in the school. And because of that, we cannot give care and uh, uh, um, look after guidance. Give guidance and look after the, uh, your kids, your children. If you if you if you bring it to our school, so the, for that matter, we need to be sure that uh, you know we have the equal amount or the 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 the, 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 the ratio between student and teacher has to be. Um, uh, has to be appropriate. So in a similar manner, uh, the teacher, just like a student has to have a proper teacher, the teacher also has to have a proper student. So there are many uh, students who are very smart that the teacher cannot help uh, because uh, most of the time that, you know, and then there are, there are many students who are very slow, but at the same time, the teacher can help. Um, so it can be wise, it, it, it can be, uh, you know, uh, in many different ways too. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes the student is very wise, very very smart, but at the same time is very egotistic, and uh, because of that, doesn't want to doesn't you know doesn't want to follow the teacher properly, and so on and so forth. So for for many reasons, uh, so the teacher also needs to check whether he or she can take uh, uh, you know um, a certain person as their student or not. So basically, the line goes: um, not checking your master or teacher is like drinking poison. 
and not checking your student is like jumping from a precipice, jumping from a cliff. So both are very, very uh, important and both are very beneficial, very effective, uh, positively effective if you do it the right way and very um, uh, the, 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 the downfall, uh, the, the, the negative um, effect is also, uh, you know, very, um, so it, you have to be very careful uh, to, to take the right teacher and the right student. So this is, uh, so all the qualities that, all the characteristics that we just described, we just uh, discussed, were uh, before uh, you, 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 you regard or you take someone as your teacher, um, <clears throat> someone as your spiritual teacher, uh, or basically what we usually call a guru, right, a spiritual guru. <clears throat> so um, uh, before you take someone as your guru, um, before you accept someone as your guru, you have to check that person thoroughly. Uh, actually, in the Buddhist uh, text, it says if you have to check someone for 12 years, you should do that. Uh, but of course, 12 is a very long time. But you can do, you know, uh, you, you can um, take some time off and uh, check the person. Not necessarily take some time off. You can just check the teacher, the, the person whom you, you want to take as your teacher, uh, from what he says and from what he does. So if there is, um, of course, most people, right, in general, what they say and what they do, there is some disparity. There is some, there will be some, you know, imbalance between the two, right? We say something, we do something. We do, we, we say we should be doing A, but then we do the B or C or D like that. So uh, most of the time we do, we, there's a disparity between what we say and what we do. That's everyone. Uh, no matter how perfect you think, uh, we all have that imperfection. Uh, so that is nothing new. Um, <clears throat> but you have to check how much of a disparity there is between what he says, what, what the person says and what the person does. and. Uh, uh, the more uh, the, 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 uh, you should accept someone with the lesser disparity, right? So there will be there is no perfect teacher. There is there is nobody perfect in the world that you can find. As long as you are imperfect, as long as I am imperfect, everybody that I look will be imperfect too. Everybody that I look up will be imperfect. As long as I have a certain flow fault within me, uh, no matter whom I look up, I will see that fault with that person as well. So as long as I am imperfect, as long as you are imperfect, anyone that you see or uh, uh, in, uh, encounter, anyone that you meet will always have a certain imperfection, either you know, from this or that or whatever. Uh, my teacher is good in this and this and that, but not in this and this and that, right? So it's like that. So there will always always be some imperfection. There will always be some disparity between, you know, what he says and what he does. That is not abnormal. That is normal in everybody. Even your own children are not perfect. Even your own parents are not perfect. Even your partners are not perfect. Nobody is perfect. So therefore you will, as long as we are imperfect, we will always find some flow in the other person. Uh, but we have to look for a teacher which has less flows. The lesser the flow, the better. The lesser the faults, the better, right? So the, 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 the shorter the list of flows, the shorter, the smaller the disparity between what the person says and what the person does, that is the person that you should go for. Um, <clears throat> so this is, we're talking about before accepting someone as your teacher, right? Uh, all these qualities, the characters that we should look for, we're talking about research. If you do research after, if you, uh, if you eat something and then check the contents, right? If you, if you eat something and then check the packet for whether this is poisonous or not, it's too late, right? You, before you consume the food, you have to check whether it's uh, poisonous or non-poisonous. So like that, 
before you accept someone as your teacher, you have to check, very thorough check. And once you take someone as your teacher, you're all done for, right? There is no, um, so after you take someone as your teacher, then you should look upon that teacher as, um, um, as a perfect Buddha, enlightened being. Okay, I will tell you more about this. So basically, uh, after you accept someone as your teacher, you should take, you should regard that teacher as a uh, completely enlightened Buddha. So um, this is, you know, very uh, uh, kind of awkward because when I say this thing, you would feel like I'm talking about myself. I'm not talking about myself, okay? I'm just uh, providing the uh, knowledge, the information that is uh, spoken in the text. So um, if I don't say these things, then you will be missing out a very important part of the Buddha Dharma, which is, uh, you know, taking um, uh, paying respect to your teacher or uh, take, taking someone as your teacher. But if I say that, it sounds awkward because you might think that I'm talking about how you should pay respect to me and, uh, you know, how you should look at me as a Buddha and things like that. So I'm not talking about that thing. Uh, it's important to uh, share uh, the this this this. Um, um, uh, this practice, the Guru Yoga, or the, the practice of regarding your teacher as uh, as a Buddha. So let me just uh, put it out briefly, okay? So basically it said in the Lamrim teachings, uh, it says that you should look up to your Guru as a Buddha simply because you want benefits, you want something good, and you don't want something bad. You want something good to happen, and you don't want anything bad to happen. Very simple reason. So you will want more reason, right? Okay. So everybody wants good things to happen. Nobody wants bad things to happen. So okay, this is very vague, very generic. So give me a more, more, uh, give me a deeper answer to that, right? So basically, Lamrim in the Lamrim text it says you should look at your guru. So when you say your guru, that has already become your uh, teacher, okay? So this is not about looking for a teacher. So when you are looking for a teacher, that person does not become your guru, right? But once you accept someone as your teacher, someone as your guru, then that becomes your guru. Now that's a different matter. Now your guru, you should look 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 uh, look at him, look uh, look up to him or her as a Buddha because you want good things to happen and not bad things to happen. Now you want to you want a deeper answer for that. Uh, so by why would uh, looking up to my teacher as a Buddha uh, make me have all the good things and avoid all the bad things? So for that, there were three um, reasons provided in the Lamrim. The first one is that uh, <clears throat> that your teacher, your teacher is uh, your teacher is verified as the Buddha by Buddha himself. This is the first reason. The second is uh, even today's in, in today's time, the Buddha still works for humanity or works for the benefit of sentient beings. Okay. The third reason is uh, your conviction, your beliefs are never certain. Okay. So three things. So the first one is that uh, the your guru is accepted. Or verified as uh, the teacher, as a, as a Buddha, by Buddha himself. But there are many quotes uh, for that, and so I'm not going to go through the quotes because this is like, you know, if you know how to read Tibetan, then there are many quotes I can read those things. But uh, you know, basically, there are many lines in the Buddha's teaching where where he says, uh, you know, your teacher is the Buddha. Uh, I'm not going to go through that, uh, but I'm going to use logic reasoning. Okay. Uh, that is, Buddha also the second the second uh, rationale is that uh, the second logic is that Buddha um, the second logic is that when the Buddha uh, even today's time the Buddhas are doing work for humanity. So now if you look uh, you know Buddha Shakyamuni came to this world 2,600 years ago and we don't see any Buddha anymore. Uh, and 
we don't see any Buddha anymore there, right? But uh, if you take that for uh, granted, then the Buddha's, Buddha's uh, um, recounting that there, there will be Buddhas in today's time working for humanity uh, seems to be false. And uh, to think that Buddha came 2,600 years ago and then he left for his heavenly abode and uh, has never come back for all the sentient beings like us, this is to, to think something like that. That is, uh, you know, very much uh, um, in uh, contrast in to 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 Buddha's Buddha's own teachings and uh, Buddha's own mindset, which is to help sentient beings. Uh, so, if the Buddha never comes back, he goes to his heavenly abode and stays there and does not never come back to, you know, live among the sentient beings and to help other sentient beings, then. Uh, it's actually contradicting his own teachings of compassion and working for the sentient beings. So for that matter, we can assume that the Buddha is here. Not, I mean, we're not talking about Buddha Shakyamuni in general, but Buddhas in general, right? Not Buddha Shakyamuni in particular, but Buddhas in general. So because of that, if you say there's one Buddha 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, and then from then onwards, in this whole of earth, there are no Buddhas at all, no Buddhas at all. This is a very, very far, you know, fetching story, statement. Uh, so for that reason, you know, and Buddha himself said that I will come, <clears throat> uh, I will come into this world to teach and to help sentient beings. So for that matter, there should be Buddhas. Now, if there are Buddhas, we don't see the Buddhas around. And if you look very carefully, the only people who is working, um, you know, who is doing the same work the Buddhas are doing as a teacher is our gurus, as our teachers. So for that matter, we can assume that our teacher, our teachers are the Buddhas. And the third, the last, the last uh, rationale is that our beliefs, our convictions are never accurate, right? So, you know, today we think this is the truth and then tomorrow it changes. Even our collective beliefs change, right? As a whole community, as a whole nation, we think something is right. And then after 50, 60 years, we know this is wrong. We have been misinformed for so many years. So as a nation, we get fooled. As a nation, we get, uh, you know, we, we get misinformed and we make, we have misinformed, uh, because we have been misinformed, we have misinformed beliefs. We have misbeliefs. And uh, so our beliefs were never um, accurate. So for that matter, even if we see somebody as, um, uh, you know, even if you don't see uh, the Buddha in as as we imagined, right, from 2,600 years ago, it doesn't mean there are no Buddhas. Just because you don't see that, just because you don't think so, just because you don't believe so, uh, doesn't mean it is not the truth, or it is the truth, for that matter. So just because you think so doesn't mean it is the truth. Just because you don't think so doesn't mean it is the fault. Uh, it, it is false, because your beliefs. Uh, can be fleeting, can be misleading. Uh, our belief, not just as individual, but as a collective society, we have been misinformed. We have so many misinformed uh, beliefs, right? Even if you go to like Facebook or nowadays in social media, you will see a large, large, large group of people saying, millions of people actually saying this is the truth. And another millions of people saying that is the truth. So, you know, there are two huge, humongous uh, section of people who believe their side is the right thing. So, there, for that matter, uh, it is very difficult to say just because you believe so, just because that is your belief, just because that has been believed by uh, my, my parents or my teachers and for many generations, or just because it's believed by my community, that is the truth. Uh, so it's very difficult to say that. So for that matter, just because you don't see a Buddha, just because you don't see your teacher as a Buddha, doesn't mean that he is not a Buddha. So you cannot rule him out as a Buddha. So for, when you combine these three logics, rationals together, then you can convince yourself to visualize your teacher as a Buddha. Now, if you do that, you know, we talk about if you take your teacher as your Buddha, there will be the benefits. Uh, good things to come and bad things to avoid, right? So if you do that, then there will be so many benefits. The benefits are, um, in, uh, you know, infinite. Uh, 
Oh. Mm, okay, so please go ahead with the two uh, questions. Um, hi, Ramjila. Uh, we have two. Um, we have one question uh, today, but the two parts in this question. Yeah. Uh, I'll read the question, uh, Ramjila. Um, if the guru we cho um, if the guru chosen cannot speak our language, uh, will there be a problem? Uh, part two is it if I don't know if I have a connection with the guru uh, with the guru, how can I get it? Thank you, Ramjila. Oh, thank you, thank you. A very good question. Very good question. Um, that's a very interesting question. It's a, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so the first part is uh, if the guru cannot speak your language, uh, does that mean you have uh, will there be, will there will there be a problem, right? Um, so let me answer by saying yes and no. Okay. <laughs> so there will be a um, if the guru does not speak your language, is there a problem? Yes and no. So there are two languages. One is conventional language, conventional language like English, Vietnamese, ja Japanese, Chinese, Tibetan. This is conventional. Language. If you don't speak that language, uh, then it is not a, you know, it, it, it's a setback, of course, but it's not. A, I don't see that as a problem because you can always uh, use a translator or there are there are mediums to go through with that, right? And uh, <clears throat> The other thing is the universal language. So, as I said earlier, loving kindness, you know, love, compassionate, uh, loving, uh, compassionate, kindness, considerate. Uh, so these are universal languages. So these, for, to 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 in, in order to speak, in order to express these languages, you don't need words. So if the teacher is lacking in these universal languages of love and kindness and consideration, then this is a big problem. Most certainly, you should avoid such teachers. If the teacher is lacking, lacking in conventional languages, that is not a big deal. First part. Second part is uh, uh, if the teacher, uh, you don't have a connection with the guru, what, what should, uh, how can I get it? Right. So. I presume by saying uh, with the guru, I, if you you are you are saying your guru as in somebody who, uh, as a person whom you have already taken as your guru, uh, then you can revive that. Uh, I, I urge you, I I urge you to revive that connection, to 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 restore that connection, and revive the connection, and uh, so you should do that by. Uh, whatever, so there's always a there's always a reason why you would lose connection with the teacher, right? It's because of some some things, because of a, as we covered earlier, because of a, some some wrong action, some wrong uh, some something. The teacher does something that you think is wrong, right? So if the teacher is behaving in a certain manner that you deem to be unrightful, right? So if you think your teacher you, if you think uh, a teacher should not be doing this, but then the teacher is doing that, and then that makes uh, there is a disparity between what a teacher says or what you presume a teacher should be doing and what the teacher is actually doing. So if there is a disparity, then there will be tension, and of course you will have a uh, uh, then you will have problem having the connection with your teacher. Now, in this case, what you have to do is, as I said earlier, we talk about the three points, right? Uh, the last one is that our conviction, our beliefs were never accurate, right? Even not just as individual, but even as a collective society, we make so many wrong assumptions. So we have to look deeper and we have to make sure, uh, you know, we have to dig deeper and we have to see that as our own fault. And uh, by, if we, if, if we uh, uh, meditate, contemplate more on the fact that our convictions were never accurate, then it will help you to uh, loosen that grip you have over, you know, your teacher, my teacher is wrong in doing this and that. So whatever the problem that you have, so that without any problem, you are not going to lose your connection with your teacher. So there should be a problem. So you should focus your uh, mindset, this, this particular mindset, this particular mindset of my conviction are never accurate. 
So you should focus with that particular mindset on the problem that you have with your teacher and that will slowly loosen the grip the stronghold that you have on the conviction that your teacher is wrong or doing the or doing the wrong thing or something like that and that will gradually uh, you know ease that uh, ease off that uh, grab hold that you have on your your teacher and then you that will help you to revive the connection uh, but if you are saying like if you have uh, if you are talking about a teacher that uh, somebody whom you want to take as a teacher, somebody you have not yet taken as a teacher, and you don't see any connection with that person, and you are talking about how to uh, start a connection with that teacher, probably uh, you cannot do that. Maybe not in this life. Uh, maybe you can just go to that person, see that person, maybe try to have a conversation or something like that, and then hope to uh, have a teacher-student relationship in next lives, not this life. Okay, I think that's all today. What did I learn? Yes, no more questions from Okay, all right, thank you. So we'll wrap up here. Yeah. <clears throat> Dedication to Jim. <laughs>